Hello guys, so recently in the Google I.O. announcement, Google had made an announcement that now Rapid's KUDF library is now integrated into Google Colab and it will increase the speed of Pandas code by up to 50x with zero code changes in the Colab notebook. So in this video, I am going to talk about this. I'm going to show you a demo, uh, like how you can actually run by using just the Rapid CUDF library and speed up your Pandas code itself up to 50x time. We'll be seeing that completely with the demo. If you really want to read about that particular tech blog more, you can probably go through this particular link. Anyhow, I will be sharing this in the description of this particular video. But in this video, we will go ahead and see one specific example. So first of all, we'll, let's go ahead and execute NVIDIA dash SMI just to see that which GPU I have. So over here, you can see Tesla T4 GPU we are specifically using. And uh, this is the amount of VRAM that we have with respect to this particular GPU. Then we will go ahead and import CUDF. So this should work without any errors as soon as and by default in Google Colab, you will be able to find this particular library. OK, now the data will be working is with the parking violation issued fiscal year 2022. We'll see the data, how it is and all. But uh, let's go ahead and download the data by using this wget command from the data.rapids.ai and here you can see nyc parking violation 2022.parke so it is a parke file first of all i will just go ahead and use normal pandas library and try to see that how the speed is later on we will restart the kernel and then we will probably go ahead and use the cudf library from nvidia and see that how speed it is okay so next uh, let's go ahead and do this first let's use pandas to see in some of the columns of the data set so we are just going to use pandas we are not using nvidia cudf library right now okay and now let's go ahead and read this parquet file here you'll be able to see that i have that particular parquet file uh, right with respect to this particular data set so here uh, you'll be able to see the data set temporary nyc parking violation 2020 parquet and we are reading this particular column that is registration state violation description vehicle body type issue date and all okay and then we are just going to see the sample of 10 rows so as soon as we execute this you will be able to see that we are reading this with the help of pandas and we are able to see this particular 10 records this is perfect right now we are just using simplistic pa pandas library okay now let's try to answer a few questions. One of the question will be that which parking violation is most commonly connected, uh, committed by vehicles from various US states. And for that, we are actually using dot value counts dot group by on registration state. And we are displaying this two particular uh, results, right? We are also sorting the index with respect to this. Now, if I go ahead and execute this, you'll be able to see that, okay, pandas is taking some amount of time and it is giving you this specific result. Okay. Now, uh, Similarly, what you can do is that I'm just going ahead with another question over here, which vehicle body types are most frequently involved in parking violation. Again, we can do a group by, by using this vehicle body type, and then we are going to do the aggregation and renaming the columns. Okay. Again, main aim is not just to make you understand how things, these things are happening, but just to make you sure, uh, make you understand that how the speed is once we use the CUDF library. Okay. Now let's see one more example. How do parking violation vary across various days of the uh, week? So I have week names like Monday, Tuesday and all, and we can probably do all this group by and let's see the answer for this. Okay. Now this is fine. See, we are just trying to use pandas for similar kind of queries, but the most interesting thing will be now when we go ahead and see with respect to the time. Now here also we are reading the same uh parquet file and then we are performing the same thing with respect to registration state the first question that we had seen and we are noting down the time let's see how much time it is going to take with a simple pandas library okay so if i go ahead and execute the same code over here you will be able to see that i am uh, like this entire code is taking somewhere around 7.61 seconds the reason is very simple pandas is still not using the gpu functionality over here the power of GPU it is not using, but as you see over here, okay, let's execute the second query that we had actually done over here. It took somewhere around 7.61 seconds here. It is taking 1.07 seconds. Okay. Uh, similarly, one more with respect to the same query here, you can probably see how much seconds it will take. And this will probably take more time because here we are also converting the data type and all. So here you can see 4.02 seconds. Now what we are going to do is that we will be using CUDF.pandas 
now for that i will first of all do the kernel shutdown and we'll restart it okay so let's execute this now you'll be able to see that it'll get restarted uh, once it particularly gets restarted this entire kernel will be also restarting see on the right hand side you can actually see it perfect now let's load this particular extension that is cudf.pandas now we are not importing pandas we are importing cudf.pandas but along with this as soon as we import pandas now it is going to use by using this particular library it is going to use the functionality of the gpu now if i execute the same code where we saw that how much second it was taking so if i go on the top it was taking somewhere around 7.61 seconds now let's see how much time this will take okay only 1.07 seconds so much better right if you see with respect to users and system side it is within milliseconds right and the total time was somewhere around 1.07 seconds same thing you are able to execute within less time okay now the next thing uh, we will go ahead and execute and see that how, whether this query will also become fast or not only 32.5 milliseconds there you could see that one to two seconds it was taking similarly if i say with, uh, with respect to this weekday underscore names and all you'll be able to see 315 milliseconds and that was taking actually somewhere around four seconds itself right so here you can see understanding performance kudas pandas provi uh, provides profiling utilities to help you understand performance with these tools you can under uh, identify which part of your code ran on the gpu and which parts ran on the cpu understand one thing is that completely Right. If I probably consider cudf.pandas, you can also replace in your day-to-day -day activities with respect to ED and all. And this will be super beneficial because with the help of this, just by using some amount of GPU, if you just have a minimalistic GPU also, you will be able to do it. So I hope you like this particular video. Anyhow, I will be providing all the code and all in the description of this particular video. Please make sure that you try it out and see whether you are also able to do it. But this is just a small video to make you understand about the importance of rapid cudf pandas accelerator mode and just by using this particular library you are making pandas go on steroid and become really powerful with respect to speed of execution so uh, yes uh, you really need to understand and this was also recently announced in google i announcement 2024 the reason why i make all these kind of videos is that to make you understand yes these are specifically important okay if you don't know about CUDF, it is a Python GPU data frame library built on the Apache Arrow column memory format for loading, joining, aggregating, filtering, and otherwise manipulating tabular data using a data frame style API, right? Uh, you need to really understand when we work with millions and millions of data set, right? By using the CUDF.pandas, you can make the performance better. You can make the execution better. Most of the projects that you probably implement, all the end-to-end -end projects, 30% of your time usually goes in feature engineering and EDA. And if you are able to incorporate CODF functionality over there, trust me, you'll be able to even do the task pretty much easier, faster, and in an efficient way. So I hope you like this particular video. I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day. Thank you, and all. Take care. Bye-bye.